Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about negative inotropic agents. So with that, let's give it a go. So what are inotropic agents? So inotropic agents are factors that can either increase or decrease the contractility of the heart. And in today's video, we're gonna be looking at negative inotropic agents. And these are gonna be agents that decreases the heart's contractility. And the main mechanism by which they're gonna do this is to decrease the amount of calcium inside the cytosol. So we're gonna talk now about the first negative inotropic agent, the calcium channel blockers. And there are a number of different drugs that act through this mechanism. But before we talk about calcium channel blockers, I wanna first review the ways in which calcium gets into the cytosol during excitation contraction coupling, and also the ways in which calcium is removed from the cytosol in order to initiate relaxation. So let's begin by looking at how calcium gets into the cell. So let's just say you have a positive charge that moves down the T-tubule and hits an L-type calcium channel. This causes a conformational change to occur, which opens the channel, allowing calcium to flow inside. The calcium then will interact with ryanidine receptors on the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which will allow the conformational change to occur, which allows calcium to leave the sarcoplasmic reticulum and to go into the cytosol. Now, when this occurs, this process is called CICR, so calcium-induced calcium release. This is because the calcium that was brought in by the L-type channel is going to interact with the ryanidine receptor and therefore allow more calcium to come in. So this increase in calcium will then lead to a contraction. Now, in order to terminate the contraction, you need to remove the calcium. And one of the mechanisms by which this occurs depends upon the sodium-potassium pump. Remember, the sodium-potassium pump pumps three sodiums out, two potassiums in, which creates a electrochemical gradient for sodium. Now, the sodium-calcium exchanger will use that gradient in order to move calcium up against its gradient, so out of the cell, by bringing in three sodiums. So when the exchanger brings in three sodiums, this releases energy, which allows the exchanger to pump out calcium against its electrochemical gradient. What we also see here is that we have the PMCA, or plasma membrane calcium ATPase. This uses the energy released by ATP hydrolysis in order to pump calcium out of the cell and hydrogen ions into the cell. Now, the most important way in which calcium is removed from the cytosol is going to be through the circa pump. So what happens is, is the circa uses ATP in order to pump calcium back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. It does this through the hydrolysis of ATP. So now that we know the ways in which calcium comes into the cell and calcium is removed from the cytosol, let's see what calcium channel blockers do. So calcium channel blockers do what their name says they do they block calcium channels. And the calcium channels which they can block include the L-type calcium channels. So whenever you block these L-type calcium channels, this basically decreases the amount of calcium that enters into the cell, which therefore decreases the contractility. Now another negative inotropic agent is going to be low extracellular calcium. So basically what this does is the low extracellular calcium is actually going to decrease the amount of calcium that enters in to the cell through the L-type calcium channels. This is because if you have less calcium outside, less calcium from the outside is going to go into the inside. So less calcium is going to enter into the cell. Another thing is that the low extracellular calcium is also going to stimulate the sodium calcium exchanger. And it stimulates it because it makes it easier for calcium to be moved out of the cell. Because remember, the sodium calcium exchanger is moving calcium against its electrochemical gradient. Therefore, if you were to decrease the calcium concentration outside the cell, this would make it easier for the exchanger to move calcium to the outside. So more calcium is going to leave the cell in this case. And because more calcium is leaving and less calcium is entering into the cell, this is going to cause a decrease in the calcium levels in the cytosol, which will therefore lead to a decrease in contractility. So the last one is going to be the high extracellular sodium. So the high extracellular sodium is actually going to stimulate the sodium calcium exchanger. And the reason why is because it's increasing that sodium electrochemical gradient, which allows the more energy to be released by the sodium calcium exchanger 
when it brings in the three sodiums. And when it does this, the sodium calcium exchanger is able to more easily move calcium out of the cell against its gradient. So in other words, more calcium is allowed to leave the cell, therefore decreasing the amount of calcium in the cytosol, therefore decreasing the contractility. So in summary, we talked about how negative inotropic agents decrease calcium levels inside the cell, thereby decreasing the contractility. And we also talked about the three negative inotropic agents. We talked about calcium channel blockers, low extracellular calcium, and high extracellular calcium. So I hope this video helped you understand what negative inotropic agents do, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.